There are times, however, when a dynamic web application may not be best for the job. So, for example, let's imagine that we've got a company and we've got 30,000 people working for us, like the London Underground. Great example. Okay, that's a bit of hair. 30,000 people. And we pay them at the end of a month. End of month they get paid or 30,000 people at once and at once imagine we've got a printer that's a printer by the way what gets printed out is a pay slip with how much they've been paid so 30,000 pay slips you would not need a dynamic system to do this because you're not printing it daily, you're not printing printing it dynamically. You you know when you're going to be printing it out. You're going to be printing it out at the end of a month. Therefore, instead of using a real-time dynamic system, which is like what Netflix is and online banking, it's real-time processing. You would use something called batch processing instead, where it's not dynamic. The screen is the same. All you have is a button which will be like print at the end of every month it will go to the database and it'll print off all 30,000 pay slips because you know when you're doing it because you're only doing it one time only and because it's going to be a big big job it's going to require batch processing rather than real-time processing so in the exam if you get ever asked about why would you use or why wouldn't you use uh, web applications or real-time processing for payroll you'll be able to answer because it's at one time only and it's going to be a big job at that one time only you're better off using batch processing to deal with the workload